Praise the Lord. I hope you are doing well in the Lord today. I have something interesting today to share with you, and I trust that it will be a great motivation for you to pray in tongues. Now, we all understand that God is the creator of all things. God made the heavens and the earth and everything that is within. Now, one thing you need to understand is that the way God made creation to work is that he ordained things. So he put principles in place, he put laws in place, and he designed things to work within those principles and within those laws. But then, not everything is ordained and not everything is fixed. So there are things that we can actually do it. Pray that God may change them. There are things that we can actually negotiate with God because God, like God gave that provision. That is why he also gave us a free will. So the whole purpose of the free will is that we have a chance to actually do some sort of negotiation with God. And that is why even from the book of Isaiah, the Lord says, come, let us reason together. So it's even God is inviting us to reason with him because we are co-creators with God. He wants us to be like him. He wants us also to, to like exercise that power over creation the way he has power over creation. Now, at this point is where you need to understand that as human beings, we are special because God wants us to be like him. But it is not easy to be like God. It is not easy to know what God knows. It is not easy to do what God does. Because you see, the way God runs creation is that it is perfect. Like he runs creation in the most perfect way possible. But for us as human beings, oftentimes we make mistakes. But you see, God does not want us to make, like he does not want us to make mistakes. He wants us to get to a point whereby we are also perfect just the way he is. And so what he does is that he gives us minor responsibilities in his great creation. That's why we have assignments from God. That's why we serve different purposes in our lives. So that, that purpose that God has created you for and that assignment that God has given you, it is basically just a training for you to prove that you can actually be perfect. And of course, you have to be led by the Holy Spirit to make perfect decisions because it is only the Holy Spirit who actually knows the perfect, the perfect decisions. Now, it is at this point that praying in tongues comes in very handy because praying in tongues is actually the prayer generated by the Holy Spirit. It is a prayer motivated by the Holy Spirit himself, which means that in the great line of perfecting us to be like God so that we can also make declarations and be part of God's creation and running God's creation perfectly, the Holy Spirit has to, has to intercede for us to get to that level of perfection. So you need to have an idea of how God is influenced and how the heart of God is influenced for you to be able to actually pray and have the heart of God influence the way you want. So usually there are three scenarios. The first scenario is what happened between Jacob and Esau. You see, before they were born, God already spoke about their lives. He already spoke that he loved Jacob and he hated Esau. And then Paul discusses this in relation to things that are preordained, things that are already ordained. And of course, there is even that debate where some people say, what is the point of praying if God has already decided what will happen and how it will happen? But usually that is not the full picture. There is more to understand concerning God's ordination. So the first scenario is that case of Esau and Jacob. When God ordained that Jacob will rule over Esau, the younger will rule over the elder, like the the, the younger child will rule over the older child. When Jacob and Esau, both of them learned that this is what God had, like what God had ordained, Jacob loved the idea. And what did he do? He committed himself to God. He pursued the ways of God. He pursued what God wanted of him and walking in perfection to what God wanted for him. 
But for Esau, when he learned that, actually he was the one to be ruled over, he got angry and hated his brother. The point that he, he, he even wanted to kill his brother Jacob. So one thing you need to understand is that even though God had ordained that Jacob will rule over Esau, what happened is that God did not force Jacob to rule over Esau. And of course, we know from the Bible that Esau sold his birthright to Jacob willfully. But later on, Esau turned and hated Jacob, yet he's the one who actually sold his own birthright to Jacob. And so even though God had ordained that Jacob will rule over Esau, it was Esau himself who actually sold his birthright so that Jacob may rule over him. And later on again, he ended up hating his brother, and yet he's the one who actually sold his birthright to, to his brother. And it was because of this double dealing of Esau that actually God hated him. And you see, what happens is that even before Esau got to that point of selling his birthright and hating his brother for sell, like for taking his like for taking his birthright, God already knew that Esau will do that. And that's why God even hated him even before he was born. And so you find that even though God ordained it to happen that way, he never forced any of the two to actually go that route. It was out of their free will that they actually fulfilled what God had already ordained. And then there is another case, the case of somebody like King Hezekiah. Now, with King Hezekiah, God had ordained the day that he will die. And so, when that day was approaching, God, out of his love and out of his care for King Hezekiah, sent prophet Isaiah. And the message was, put your house in order, for you will surely die. But when Hezekiah heard what God had on, like what God had ordained for him, he actually petitioned and actually protested and said, uh, I have been faithful to you, I have worked faithfully to you. And so he pleaded with God to change what he had ordained for him. And sure enough, God again sent prophet Isaiah with a new message. And God actually added Hezekiah 15 more years. So in that case, God had ordained a day for Hezekiah to go and rest with his forefathers. But Hezekiah petitioned and actually God listened to him and added him 15 more years. So this actually shows that it is possible for you to pray and petition God to actually change what he had, like what he had already ordained for you. And then lastly, there is a case of Jesus Christ. Remember, the night before Jesus Christ was crucified, he was in the garden praying. And in his prayer, he was praying that if it was God's will, the cup of suffering be taken away from him. But of course, as we know, the cup of suffering was never taken away from him. And even just reading this scripture, I used to ask myself, surely Jesus Christ knew that, like Jesus Christ knew what the will of the Father was. He knew that the Father had ordained for him to actually go and die on the cross because Jesus Christ had spoken himself before about the manner of death he was going to die. So how comes, he, like at the very last minute, he pleads with God to take away that cup of suffering from him. But then I understood that Jesus Christ knew what God's will was and he knew that cup of suffering was there for him to drink it. But what was different was that Jesus Christ wanted to show something about God's ordination. So there are things that God ordained that he cannot change. Even if you plead with him, even if Jesus Christ pleaded with him, he cannot change. One of such things is actually like that death of Jesus Christ on the cross, the very specific death of Jesus Christ. So there was no way God was going to, to change that because he knew that the salvation of all men depends on the death of Jesus Christ. And so he was not going to change that because that was the only way human beings could be saved. And so even though Jesus pleaded with God and prayed that it may be like it may be changed, God actually didn't change it. So what you need to understand is that there are always these three scenarios that are taking place. The scenario of Jacob and Esau, the scenario of Hezekiah, and the scenario of Jesus Christ. Now, when you are praying for things concerning your own life, there are things that God has ordained that you cannot change, that you just need to accept. So there are things that God has ordained concerning your life that are good. So like what like what Jacob learned, 
And so in that case, all you have to do is just rejoice in the Lord and pursue those things. And then there are things that God ordained that you can actually petition, like Hezekiah. So there are things concerning your life that God has ordained, but you can always petition and have those things adjusted so that they fit what you actually wish for because of your relationship with God. And then lastly, there are things that are ordained about you that completely can never be changed no matter what you do. So in like more like that case of Jesus Christ, where God had ordained that Jesus Christ should die on the cross, and no matter what he would do, there was no changing that. So this may prove to be difficult to know if you are praying for a specific thing, whether it is something that can be changed, whether, whether it is a permanent thing, or whether it is just something you need to adjust to actually accept it. And this is where now praying in tongues actually comes in handy, because the Holy Spirit understands the mind of God. The Holy Spirit knows all the situations in your life. He knows which one can be changed. He knows which one can be petitioned. He knows which one is permanent, and you should not bother to actually try to change it. And because of that, when you pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit automatically just intercedes perfectly for every situation in your life according to what he knows God ordained concerning your life. And so when you pray in tongues more, you will actually realize that almost all the prayers that you make, they end up like working perfectly with God's will. Because if it is a case whereby it is you to adjust to what God ordained for you, then the Holy Spirit will actually just prompt you to adjust to what God ordained for you. If it is a case of you petitioning so that you may have things changed for your favor, the Holy Spirit will actually petition so that things are changed for your favor. And if there are things that are permanent that can never be changed completely, then of course the Holy Spirit again will let you know that God can never change his mind on that. And so you just have to accept and go with it the same way Jesus Christ accepted to go to the cross. So, praying in tongues and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you, he will always lead you into the perfect prayer and guide you into the perfect way to actually influence the heart of God, where actually there is a possibility for you to influence the heart of God. So, what you will realize is that your life will become very smooth and you will often find that you have a very sweet relationship with God because everything that you are doing in your life actually aligns with what God ordained and what God desires of you. So that is what I had to share with you today. I hope you found it helpful. God bless you.